السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طلابي الأعزاء طلاب الفرقة الثالثة بكلية العلاج الطبيعي جامعة بنها أهلا ومرحبا بحضراتكم جميعا وكل عام وحضراتكم بخير وإن شاء الله يا رب عام دراسي موفق علينا جميعا بإذن الله يكون معاكم دعاء سعيد محمود أستاذ المناهج وطرق تدريس الكيمياء المساعد كلية التربية جامعة بنها بأمر الله الكورس بتاعنا هيكون عبارة عن scientific thinking course بما ان النهارده اول سيشن لنا مع بعض هنبتدي مع بعض بامر الله شابتر 1 about thinking what is the meaning of thinking and what is the nature of thinking before we recognize about what is the meaning of thinking we should know that everything we do in our life that involves thinking that is mean nothing we do as humans that doesn't involve thinking. Our thinking tells us many important information, such as our thinking tells us what to believe, what to believe, what to reject, what is important, what is uh, unimportant, what is true, what is false, who are our friends, and so on. So, in general, we can say everything we want, we know, hope, believe. Our thinking tells us. It is full of sin that the quality of our lives depend on or primarily determined by the quality of our thinking. Again, the quality of our lives is primarily determined by the quality of our thinking. Why? Because our thinking has many implications for how we can doing or go about doing literally everything in our life. For example, the quality of your work is determined by the quality of your thinking as you reason through the problems you are face as you work. Another example, the quality of your relationships is it reminded by the quality of your thinking. Your thinking, you do it in those relationships. After this introduction, we will recognize about the natural of thinking. The natural of thinking, what is the natural of thinking? Thinking is the base of all cognitive activity. The base of all cognitive activities or processes. Also, it is unique to humans. Only humans. Again, thinking is the base of all cognitive thinking. All cognitive, sorry, activities or processes. And it is unique to humans. Thinking also involves evaluation and analysis. Evaluation and analysis of information received from our environment. Until now, we know thinking is the base of all cognitive activities. Number two, we know thinking is unique to humans. Number three, thinking is involves manipulations and analysis of information. This information comes from what? Come from our environment. You receive information from our environment. For example, while seeing a painting, are you focused on colors or lines and stroke? No. You aren't focusing on the color of painting or lines and strokes. Rather, you are going behind, going behind the given text in interpreting its meaning. Also, you are trying to relate the new information with or to your exciting knowledge. When we see painting, we are going behind given text to what to making its mean 
and you are trying to relate the information from this painting and your exciting knowledge. So, understanding the painting. Understanding the painting involves creation of its meaning. This is new information for me. Creation of new meaning that is added to your knowledge. Therefore, thinking is a higher mental process, higher mental process, through which we manipulate and analyze. Analyze what? Analyze information. Information is acquired or exciting information. Such manipulations and analysis acquires by means of means of abstracting, uh, imagination, reasoning, judgment, uh, problem solving, and decisions making. Until now, we recognize the nature of thinking as number one is the base of all cognitive activities or processes. Number two, thinking is unique to humans. Number three, thinking is thinking uh, involves manipulations and analysis of information. This information we obtain from or received from our environment. After that, we know in thinking we do some manipulations and analysis of information. Such manipulations and analysis occurs by means of abstraction, reasoning, uh, problem solving, judging, and decision making. Let's do complete. Also, thinking is mostly organized, mostly organized and have a goal or goal directed. Thinking is mostly organized and the goal directed. All activities, all day-to-day -day activities ranging from uh, cooking to solving a scientific knowledge, sorry, a scientific problems, have a goal. We can reach this goal by planning. We can reach this goal by planning or recalling. Recalling what? Recalling some steps that already one has followed if the task is familiar. If the task is familiar, we can recalling some steps that one has already followed in the past. And we can inferring, inferring in strategies if the task is new or unfamiliar. We will say also thinking is an uh, internal, internal mental process, internal mental process, which can infer from overt behavior. Thinking is an internal mental process, which can be informed by what? From overt behavior. Let's go to example. For example, if you see a chess player in a chess player engrossed in thinking for several minutes, so for several minutes before making a move, can you observe what he is thinking? No, you can't observe what he is thinking. You can simply infer what he was thinking, what he was thinking, or what strategies he was trying to evaluate after, after his next move. So, when we recognize of the nature of thinking, we will focus on some steps. Number one, thinking is a base of all cognitive activities. Number two, thinking is unique to humans. Number three, thinking involves manipulations and analysis of information. 
Number four, thinking is a higher mental process, which involves manipulations and analysis of information. Such manipulations and analysis of information occurs by means of abstracting, reasoning, problem solving, uh, judging, and decision making. We also will focus on thinking is mostly organized and goal directed. We can obtain or receive to this goal by planning. Finally, we will focus on thinking is an internal internal mental process which be which can be inferred from overt behavior. After we recognize about the nature of thinking, we can now define thinking. What is the meaning of thinking? We can define thinking by variety of ways, such as, number one, we can define thinking as an activity of personal reason, as a process of re enforcement the relationship the relationship between the stimulus and response again we can define the thinking by say thinking is the activity thinking is the activity the activity of human reason as a process of reinforcement the relationship relationship between what relationship between stimulus and response. We also can define thinking. Can define thinking as thinking is a reasonable, a reasonable working, reasonable working of uh, various views with the knowledge, knowledge that has been stored in our mind, knowledge that has been stored in the mind long before long before the emergence of new knowledge again thinking is the reasonable reasonable working reasonable working of various views of with the knowledge knowledge that has been stored in our mind in the mind long before long before the emergence of new knowledge until now we Define thinking by two ways. The number one, thinking is the activity of the human reason as a process. Process of what? Process of reinforcement, the relationship. Relationship between the stimulus and response. Number two, thinking is a reasonable, a reasonable working. Working of a various view with the knowledge that has been stored in the mind long before the emergence of new knowledge. We can say or we can define thinking also as processing information, processing information mentally or cognitively by, by rearranging, rearranging, rearranging the information, information from what? Information from the environment. Again, Thinking is a processing information, processing information, mentally or cognitively, by rearranging, rearranging the information from the environment and the symbols. Symbols are stored in the memory of his past. We also can define the thinking. The thinking is a symbolic representation, symbolic representation of what? Of some event train of ideas. Again, thinking is a symbolic representation, symbolic, symbolic representation of some event train of ideas. In a brief or uh, careful that began with the problems. Finally, we can define thinking as thinking is a mental process 
mental representation newly formed through through the transformation transformation of information transformation of information by by interaction by attributes such as the assessment of mental abstraction a logical imagination and the problem solving so we can observe that is no definitions one definition for thinking we can define thinking by a various ways such as number one thinking is activity of human reason as a process of reinforcement the relationship between stimulus and response number two thinking is a reasonable reasonable working of various views with the knowledge knowledge that has been stored in the mind before long before long before the emergence of new knowledge number three we can define thinking what we can define thinking as the processing information processing information mentally or cognitively by rearranging rearranging the information information from the environment and the symbols symbols are stored in the memory of his past number four six is thinking sorry thinking is a symbolic representation symbolic representation of some event event train of ideas in careful that began with the problem Finally, thinking is a mental process, mental representations, new formed through what? Through the transformation of information by interaction attributes such as the assessment of abstraction, mental abstraction, uh, logical imagination, and the problem solved. Until now, we take the introduction of thinking, the nature of thinking, and finally we take the definitions of thinking. Now we will go to another point. We will go to building blocks of thinking. Building blocks of thinking. We already know that thinking depend on knowledge knowledge we was already possess again we already now know that thinking re respond uh, realizes on depend on knowledge depend on knowledge we already we already possess such knowledge is represent either in the form of images or words our in our knowledge is represent such either in the form of images or some words people usually think by means of images mental images or words until now we recognize that we already know the thinking depend on knowledge this knowledge we already possess, we already acquired. Such knowledge is representation, represented either in the form of images or words. People usually think by means of mental images or words. For example, suppose you are traveling by road to reach a place. Suppose you are traveling by road to reach a place which you had visited, which you had visited long back. You would try to what? You would try to use visual representation. Visual representation of the street and other places to recognize the road. On the other hand, when you wanted to try to 
by a storybook. Your choice would depend on upon your knowledge about different different authors, uh, topics, scenes, and so on. Hence, your thinking is based on words or concepts. After that, we will define some important elements, some important elements which are important or involved in the thinking process. Now, we will define few important elements that involve it in the thinking process. There are six elements. Number one, images. Number two, concepts. Number three, symbols and signs. Number four, uh, language. Number five, musical activity. And finally, brain. Function of brain. Again, we have some view important elements involved in the thinking process, such as images, concepts, symbols and signs, language, musical activities, and finally, function of brain. Let's start with images. When we take example about we uh, want to suppose uh, you are traveling to a place by road to reach this place you can or you would try to use the visual representation. When we use the visual representation you already use images. Again suppose you are traveling by road to reach any places which you had visited long back you would try to use use what use visual representation of the street and the other places when we use visual representation we already use images or mental images images as mental picture images mental pictures consist of personal experiences mental picture consists of personal experiences experiences of what experiences of objects persons situations and events heard all and felt these mental pictures symbols symbolize the actual objects the actual experiences the actual situations and activities. Again, images is a mental picture. Images is a mental picture. Consists of, consists of what? Consists of personal experiences. Personal experiences. Personal experiences of objects, persons, situations, and events. These mental pictures or images symbolize symbolize what symbolize the actual actual objects actual person actual experiences actual situations and activities when we think in thinking we usually usually manipulate the images rather than the actual the actual object is experiences, situation, and activities. Again, when we think in thinking, we usually, usually manipulate the images rather than, rather than the actual thinking, the actual objects, the actual uh, experiences, the actual uh, situations, and so on. Now, we take the first element of involved in the processes of thinking is images. Images is a mental process. Mental process. Mental process consists of consists of personal experiences. 
personal experiences of what of objects, persons, situations, and uh, activities. These mental pictures symbolize the actual thing, the actual objects, the actual activity, the actual uh, uh, situations, and so on. When we think, in thinking, we use what? We usually manipulate the images rather than the actual objects, experiences, situations, or activities. Now we will go to the second element, concepts. What is the meaning of concepts? As we think, we use some concepts as uh, metal, as non-metal, and so on. A concept is a general idea. Concept is a general idea that stands for a general class or a general uh, category. Again, concept is a general general idea. General idea that stands for stands for a general class or general category. Concept is a general idea that stands for a general class or general category and represents represent what represent the common common characteristic of all objects or events of this general category or general class how when we define a concept a concept is a general a general idea that stands for general class or general category and represent represent the common all common characteristic of objects or uh, events of this general class or general category let's go to the third element what third element we will define symbols and signs symbols and signs symbols and signs represent and stand for substitute the actual the actual objects or experiences and activities for example for example traffic lights really we uh, a school bands badges, songs, flags, and slogans. All of this is symbols and signs. All are symbolic representation. All are symbolic representation. Symbolic expression. They stimulate and motivate, motivate thinking because they tell us tells us what tells us what to do or how to act again now we take or recognize the view important elements of thinking process number one images number two concepts number three symbols and sign symbol and sign represent and stand for substitute of the actual objects, experiences, and activities. For example, traffic, traffic lights, railway signals, school panels, badges. All are symbolic representation, symbolic experiences, symbolic uh, expressions. They stimulate and modify thinking because they tell us tell us what to do or how to act after this we will take the number four language 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 is important element in our thinking or in thinking process because we usually use language for 
carrying out carrying out the process of thinking we usually use language for carrying out process of thinking such as when a person reads writes or hear words or a sentence or observe gesture in any language one is, is stimulated to think stimulating to a to think thus reading and writing of documents and literature also help in stimulating and motivation and uh, promoting the thinking process after this we can go to the five element this element is musical activity also thinking is one way or the other shows the evidence of the involvement of some movement of groups of our musicals again thinking is one way or the other shows the evidence of the evidence of involvement of some movement movement of our uh, groups of our musicals in thinking a high positive a high positive relation has been found between found to excite for the thinking and the musical activities of an individual. Finally, brain functions. Whatever may be the role of musicals, thinking is primarily a function of the brain. Whatever may be the role of the musicals, thinking is primarily a function of the brain. Our mind is said to be the chief uh, instrument of thinking process. The experiences registered by our sense organs have no meaning and thus can't serve as stimulating or instrument of thinking unless these impressions are received by our brain cells now we recognize some points in thinking such as introduction about thinking the nature of thinking some definitions of thinking and finally we recognize about some important elements in our thinking process we will take in another session some important sentence or uh, some important uh, knowledge about thinking such as what is the meaning sorry what is the difference between good thinker and the poor thinker okay and we will take the types of thinking there are many many various of types of thinking thank you for your uh, brain for your times and we will go complete this chapter in the second session goodbye samari